where did the universe come from? You see, whatever has come into existence was caused to come into existence by something else. The universe came into existence, so what caused it to come into existence? The universe came into being, right? Big Bang, right? What caused the Big Bang? I don't know. I'm not a scientist. But it's, you only have two options, something or no thing. <laughs> something or nothing. That's it. Now, if something caused it, which is the odds-on favorite, then that thing is outside of the natural system. You can't get at it by science, in a direct way at least. But that there is a Big Bang is indication that some, probably someone powerful, intelligent, capable of creating the whole universe exists. Big Bang needs a Big Banger, right? Uh, I think you probably thought the big challenge would be on the second premise, which is that the universe began to exist, but that's pretty firmly you know, established. Many theists like to confidently and conclusively claim that the universe began to exist. Many act like the universe having a beginning is firmly established, but this simply shows there are laymen in cosmology and don't understand that many cosmologists and modern cosmology treat the issue of the universe either having a beginning or being eternal as very much an open question and many scientists are siding with the notion that the universe is eternal. You have Alan Guth saying the universe is very likely eternal, Sean Carroll's quantum eternity theorem, and now you have the eternal universe model of Ahmed Farag Ali and Saria Das, who have published a paper where they resolve the Big Bang singularity and where the universe has no beginning and no end. This completely undermines and discredits the conclusive claims of people like Johanna F. Rotz, who says that space-time has been shown to be emergent. Since obviously if space-time is emergent, the universe cannot be eternal, since things that emerge are effects and effects cannot be eternal. Johanna F. Rotz presents the notion that space-time is not fundamental, but emergent, as if it is a consensus fact and a foregone conclusion in the scientific community. But given that scientists are still open to and even actively developing eternal universe models, this clearly shows Roth is wrong in presenting such a claim as if it is a consensus and conclusive fact. Although I don't agree with various aspects of their model, such as an infinite age of the universe, since I hold that an infinite age is philosophically incoherent, the Ali and Das model is very intriguing because it claims to not only get rid of the Big Bang singularity, but also it gets rid of a Big Crunch singularity and accounts for dark matter and dark energy, which if it does all that, will be a sensational breakthrough. How the Ali and Das model works is that instead of using classical geodesics, they employ the idea of David Bohm and use quantum trajectories. These Bohmian trajectories are then applied to the quantum corrected Ray Chaudhuri equation, which then derives quantum corrected Friedman equations, which contains two correction terms. The first can be understood as the cosmological constant, and the second is a radiation term, which gets rid of the Big Bang singularity and predicts an infinite age for the universe. What happens is that since Bohmian trajectories do not cross even at or to infinity, there will be no convergence, and that avoids geodesic incompleteness and singularities. The Ali and Das model also has the universe being filled with a quantum fluid or condensate, which is described by a normalizable and single-valued wave function. They envisage that the condensate is composed of gravitons. When will people like Greg Kokel, Matt Slick, Lee Strobel, Winery Knight, inspiring philosophy and William Lane Craig get up to speed with modern cosmology and understand that the universe beginning to exist is not a fact and is very much an open question and that several cosmologists are siding with it being eternal. Yes, this realization does wreck arguments for God at the Kalam and puts an arguably fatal wrench in theism, but the point is not to be dogmatic, but to go where reason and evidence leads.